Okay, Swimming Pool Steve here with a nice surprise. This is a nice looking room, so let's get started here. So here we have our intake manifold, nice jandy three-way valve, but the thing I like the most here, two-inch pipe, two-inch pipe, sweep elbows, nice big straight run of two-inch into the pump. This is what all intake manifolds should look like. Um, or something, you know, along this line. If I could have, if, if, you know, you could design it any which way, I would have had that straight run right here, just to eliminate one more. But, I mean, I'm really just being picky here. This is really nice. Two-inch two inch plumbing, sweep elbows, everything. Nice straight run, just beautiful. Got a, looks like a Hayward EcoStar, variable speed, um, three horsepower peak, variable speed pump, super nice. Uh, really quiet operation. It's really zinging along right now, and you can barely even hear the thing. You can see it's running beautifully with a full chamber of, uh, of water there, not one little iota of air, which is fantastic. Um, I like that they didn't 90 immediately. They gave it a little pipe stub. Again, I would have preferred a little higher, but they've done that to match with the intake height for the, the filter here. You can barely see. There it is there. So we come out of the top of this variable speed pump into another three-way valve. This, this three-way valve is not required. This is something that somebody's added so that this pool can be drained through that backwash line. Um, since this isn't a sand filter, it's a cartridge filter, uh, there is no backwashing procedure. So in the event there's too much rain or anything like that, this is just a nice convenient way uh, to discharge that extra water out through your system without having to drop in a submersible pump. So we go into the filter there out of the filter. Again, all two inch rigid pipe. I love that. It's fantastic. Now we do have a street elbow there. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know I hate street elbows. Uh, but you know, what are you going to do? It's, it's not perfect, uh, but it's pretty darn close. Into the heater. Nice uh, Hayward Universal FDN 250. Out of the heater, straight down into a check valve. Again, that's a street elbow. Would have preferred to see a sweep elbow. Maybe a little bit of room in between that check valve and the, uh, the intake here for, or the out outlet for the heater. Um, just give it a little bit more space, reduce on the amount of turbulence in the water, which will reduce on the amount of friction loss that the water experiences traveling through these lines. That being said, I'm just super happy to see that there's a check valve there because of course there's the Hayward chlorinator cell, and that is the, T oh, it's the low, sal low salt. So this salt cell operates at around 1,500 parts per million compared to the standard uh, Hayward system, which is 3,000 parts per million, which is already better than the, the Zodiac system at 4,000 parts per million. So 1,500 parts per million. What's interesting is that's just a new labeled T-cell 15. It's the exact same cell, but they changed the digital circuitry in 2013, 2014 to uh, allow for the system to run at a lower level. In theory, they didn't change any of the actual hardware. All they changed was just the digital circuitry that prevents the system from turning off below, I think it's 25, 2600 parts per million. Normally, if your salt set system detects that you're below that amount, it just stops producing salt and puts on an error light. This one doesn't. It allows you to run down. So if this pool is not big, which it's not, this is a 14 by 28 pool that I'm dealing with here, um, that salt cell will be more than enough to, to maintain uh, free chlorine available in this pool at around 1500 parts per million. But let's say it's not. Let's say you go with this unit and your pool gets a ton of use because everybody loves your pool, so there's always a lot of chlorine demand. You can just raise that salt level back up, in theory, all the way up to 3,000 parts per million. Then it's just going to operate like a standard uh, T cell 15 uh, Hayward salt chlorinator. Uh, but I like these ones here. If you can get away with less salt, you definitely want to use it. So uh, it's nice to see that people are you know, getting on board with this and using things like check valves there and low salt systems. And more, there we go. Uh, what else we got here? One thing that we passed over you didn't see because I was looking at it from the top. That right there is my favorite thing. That is a sacrificial anode designed to prevent against the effect of galvanic corrosion in this pool. Um, it doesn't 100% protect the system, but it certainly makes a big difference in something that every swimming pool should have. Not just salt swimming pools, every swimming pool should have one, but it's especially important for salt water pools. So that's uh, it's really nice to see that there. Now I do see that they've connected that to the bonding lug of the heater, which is not the correct way to connect that. Uh, that should be tied into a bonding loop, uh, as should this component right here. But as I was looking around here, I can see that there is a bare copper wire. There it is right there. 
Now that's being drawn up from the ground here, right underneath those black pipes. And I suspect that this system is, uh, is new. This pool installation looks very new. And I suspect that that's just something, the final details that haven't been taken care of yet. Uh, because that sacrificial anode, that heater, and that pump all still need to be bonded. But that being said, I mean, it's, it's clearly going to get done. Somebody's drawn that bonding wire in here already to do it. It's just not completed yet, even though the system's already running. Uh, so just to finish out what we were talking about there, we've got the Hayward uh, low salt cell. We have the flow switch for that. Uh, so again, with this, is, this being two inch pipe, you need 10 times the pipe diameter. So 20 inches in front of that switch and four times the pipe diameter. So that's eight inches following that switch. So this switch is installed correctly. Nice to see. I, I see a lot of mistakes with these things, uh, but this one is installed perfectly. And again, two inch pipe right into another Jandy three way valve uh, for individual control. That's going to be stair jets there. That's going to be the returns for the pool. All done in two inch, all done in rigid. Cartridge filter, everything is looking great on this one. I mean, if, if you're the owner of this system, I think you, you'd have got to be pretty happy with that. If you've seen a lot of my videos, you've seen that this, this is just miles ahead of what most guys are doing. So kudos to the, to the installer that did this work here.